So a particular theme with regard to elections on this show is the way that super PACs spend millions and millions of dollars trying to defeat primary challengers to incumbent Democrats. And they spend this money always and only on progressives. We're seeing it with Jessica Cisneros in Texas. We saw it with Nina Turner in Ohio. And it's the same story every single time. But I also want to talk about the way that they are targeting incumbent progressives in Congress, trying to unseat them. So all that work that you did to elect these progressives, these groups are going to put millions and millions of dollars into these races to defeat them. And one of their main targets is Rashida Tlaib. And the reason why they're targeting her is deeply, deeply bigoted. But they're not saying that. So their agenda is very insidious, but they're targeting Rashida Tlaib specifically because she is a Palestinian woman. This is Islamophobia, but they're not putting that front and center, and they're trying to hide what their real agenda is. So as Brett Wilkins of Common Dreams explains, a new political action committee backed by a major New York hedge fund and Democratic politician turned cable news commentator Bakari Sellers plans to spend more than $1 million in a bid to oust progressive second-term Michigan Democrat Rashida Tlaib from the U.S. House of Representatives in November's midterm elections. Politico reports Urban Empowerment Action Pack announced a new campaign to elect solutions-oriented Democrats to Congress, sure. UEA PAC's premier race will be in Michigan's 12th congressional district where the group plans to spend upwards of $1 million on TV, digital, mail, radio, and print advertising to support Detroit City Clerk Janice Winfrey in her campaign to restore infrastructure, improve educational opportunities in the district, and support the Biden-Harris agenda in D.C., the new group said in a statement Friday. Politico does not mention UEA's biggest contributor. According to OpenSecrets.org, the New York-based hedge fund Third Point LLC, founded by multi-billionaire investor Daniel S. Loeb, has given $76,000 to the PAC. And that's why I went with the Common Dreams article rather than the Politico article, because this is absolutely crucial context that we need as readers. Now, they're saying this really is about policy. We want someone who's solutions-based. And really, you know, Rashida Tlaib, she doesn't support the Biden-Harris agenda enough. What? She was fighting the hardest for Build Back Better. That's Biden's agenda. Build Back Better is the name of Biden's slogan. And these were things that she didn't want even. She wanted to go further, but she fought for the president's agenda because she knew that he's a moderate who wouldn't want to do big things like do free education, free healthcare. But yet they're saying, oh, well, you know, she just, she's not issue oriented enough, but really what they mean is she's too Palestinian. She's too Palestinian. Now they're not going to say that to you, but they're going to hide their bigotry, but we know what this is about. So the individual who's fundraising for this group, Bakari Sellers, this is an individual who is an apartheid supporter. In 2012, Bakari Sellers tweeted a picture of himself and far-right billionaire Sheldon Adelson, adding, reminder, just an example of how Israel can bring parties together. So Bakari Sellers is a hack who doesn't want anyone to speak out against the war crimes of the Israeli government. And you have the first Palestinian American in Congress and she is a vehement supporter of Palestinian human rights, and she is one of the few, perhaps the strongest opponent to Israeli war crimes against the Palestinian people. And Bakari Sellers just so happens to target this district because she's not solutions-based enough. We see right through you, Bakari. You're an Islamophobe, you're a bigot, and I'm not afraid to call you what you are. You approve of war crimes, and you think that anyone who dares to condemn apartheid should be ousted from Congress. But um, we're not going to accept this. Now, more from the article. According to Politico, Sellers, the former South Carolina state lawmaker and failed lieutenant governor candidate who regularly appears on CNN as a political analyst, is fundraising for UEA PAC. When asked about his endorsement of Winfrey, he told Politico's The Recast that we are hoping that we can have a candidate that doesn't have varying distractions. Sure, Bakari. Tlaib, who is a Palestinian-American and squad colleague, Representative Ilhan Omar, the first Muslim-American women elected to Congress, have been smeared as anti-Semites by both Republican and Democrat. Democratic lawmakers for their advocacy of Palestinian rights, their condemnation of Israeli war crimes, including apartheid and ethnic cleansing, and their willingness to criticize President Joe Biden over unconditional U.S. support for Israel. And that right there is the distraction, the quote-unquote distraction that Bakari Sellers is concerned with. He doesn't like that she condemns war crimes. 
Bakari Sellers thinks that Israel should be able to murder Palestinians with impunity and continue to expand settlements, occupy them in perpetuity, and anyone who speaks out should be ousted from Congress. Well, fuck you, Bakari Sellers. Absolutely not. Now, I wasn't thinking about contributing to Rashida Tlaib because she's not my representative, but now I want to donate to Rashida Tlaib, and I hope that the people watching this do as well. I hope that this galvanizes people because this cannot keep happening. The same thing happened with Nina Turner. She refused to pledge her loyalty to Israel, and she is critical of them for what they're doing to the Palestinian people and critical of the Israeli government, mind you, not the people. And, well, DMFI came in and spent millions of dollars against her. It's disgusting. But Rashida Tlaib is not backing down, and she's made it very clear she's not afraid at all. She tweeted out yet another Wall Street billionaire-funded super PAC running interference in local races, spending millions to peddle lies and distortions, pushing a pro-corporate agenda on a district that has consistently stood against the corporate greed hurting our families. It's flattering that billionaires who know nothing about our district are so scared of our movement. Voters have a choice, the candidate of Wall Street or the candidate of your street. Bring it. Yeah, and I love that. Never back down, never surrender to these absolute corporate ghouls. So if you have time, if you have a buck or two to spare, support Rashida Tlaib. Uh, if you can, if you live in that district, definitely canvas, uh, canvas for her. But don't let people like Bakari Sellers, who are Islamophobic bigots, bully people into silence. The fact that for the first time in my generation, perhaps first time ever, we have people in Congress speaking out on behalf of Palestinian human rights is incredible. I mean, you might have your criticisms of the squad, but the fact that they're so strong on this issue, that really says something. So we have to protect what we've accomplished. And that means keeping people in power who are speaking out on behalf of human rights and not going along with everyone else who's just okay with apartheid so long as money isn't spent against them or money is spent on their behalf. It's, it's disgusting, but that's why we've got to protect people like Rashida Tlaib. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there, like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today.